I'm going to talk for the next few minutes about what we've been facing at the airport and what you can expect from us going forward. But first, let me set the context. There have been a lot of changes in the commercial aviation industry in the last 10 years. That is not news, I know. We have gone from 12 major US airlines down to four mega carriers through, mag merger, excuse me, through mergers and bankruptcies. And in Pittsburgh alone, our hub carrier, US Airways, went through a number of bankruptcies. We all remember them. They took down the hub here in Pittsburgh and finally, last year, disappeared forever from the industry. The, the impact to the airport was substantial. Almost overnight, we had a dramatic loss of passengers resulting from the connecting passengers no longer using the airport. But we also saw a steady decay in the origin and destination passengers, people who either began or ended their trip in Pittsburgh, mostly as the result of the loss in destinations. You can't get any place easily, as we heard from the partners. You stop flying. So those changes were significant. The one that I felt most seriously when I got here last January 15th was the dramatic loss of confidence. It was evident in staff at the airport, and it was evident in some partners in the community who felt like, what can you do? Don't we just have to live with what we were left with? We were sideswiped, we were blindsided in this community, and we were not alone. In 2009 in San Francisco, bear with me, there was a company that launched an idea connecting passengers or people who wanted to go someplace with drivers willing to take them there through a mobile application. Almost overnight, that company, with its launch, disrupted an international industry. Uber now operates in 200 cities across the world, over 50 companies, has a market cap of over $50 billion, and without owning a single car, did this. In 2005, Investors had invested in a podcast sharing platform company that was about to launch. And then Apple released iTunes, and they thought, okay, well, I guess we don't have a product. What do we do now? So they started these day-long hackathons to figure out what can we use this investor money to support. And someone came up with the idea of sharing status in real time. Twitter now has over 325 million users and growing, and a market cap of $10 billion. Google released the prototype for Google Glass in one day. <laughs> Doesn't matter that it wasn't commercially viable. They did it in a day. That's how fast change has been happening. And that's what was going on while all of the airlines were consolidating in that time frame. A lot of industries and businesses have had to cope with competitive and innovative forces that change the way we work, that change the way we think about how we work. And airports, like all businesses, have life cycles. We have our own S-curve. Remember that? The idea that as you launch a product or service and your, your, your business is growing, up go the profits, up goes the market share, up goes all of the things that you're hoping will continue to increase until something hits. And either your curve flattens, if, you know, due to competitive forces or industry events, or you drop off. And a whole lot of companies don't make it because they don't innovate in time. That is not our course. We are growing. Numbers are up for passengers overall. Our costs are down. The number of nonstop destinations are increasing. Not only are we ascending our own S-curve, we are creating its trajectory. With an incredible team, laser focused on vision and mission, through a culture of innovation that we are creating, and through meaningful partnerships, we also add into that a healthy dose of market paranoia. <laughs> we always have a plan B. And tonight what I'd like to do is talk to you about what we've been doing at Pittsburgh International Airport and also at what I call that gem of a, of a building in West Mifflin, the county airport, so that we can tell you what you can expect from us. As the region has worked hard to diversify its economy, the airport too has had to work hard to diversify the airlines that serve it. The economy can no longer depend on one, on one industry, and the airport can no longer depend on one carrier. But I want to be clear, we're not a hub, and we're not going to be. The opposite of a hub is not, not a hub. The opposite of a hub is an O&D market, is an origin and destination airport, like Boston, like San Diego, like Seattle, like Kansas City, an airport that serves the needs of its customers, 
today and is prepared to serve the needs of its customers in the future. We no longer serve connecting passengers, and that's not our future. We are working hard to strategically transform our airport from an airport both physically and in its airline partners to serve this growing O&D market. Our vision is to be a global aviation leader, inspiring regional growth and prosperity, and we mean it. So what did we do in 2015? What kinds of physical changes can you see at the airport that reflect that commitment? First of all, we do have Uber and Lyft joining our taxi partners in providing ground transportation. We, are one, we were one of the first 10 airports in the US to make that happen. We've opened a mother's nursing lounge. We have a new streamlined international arrivals process, which means you no longer have to clear TSA to get back to your car after a flight from Paris. The terrazzo floor has opened, and that center core, Air Mall's beautiful center core, is now evident, and the artwork of Clayton Merrill, the CMU artist, is on display. Our baggage claim area finally has new carpeting, took down those half walls and opened up the whole area. We have shared use terminal equipment that allows for more cost effective use by new entrant airlines so that they can come in and work effectively. And we finally have Starbucks. Um, <laughs> the efforts of all of the team have not gone unnoticed. Our customer service scores and rankings have improved for three consecutive quarters. JD Powers now ranks us as one of the top 10 airports in our size category. We have seen a dramatic increase in air service offerings. We are up 30% in a year. Nobody thought we could do that. Nobody. We have five new carriers that we've welcomed to the market, OneJet, Porter, Sun Air Express, and two of the fastest growing carriers in the, in the ultra low cost ca carrier category, Allegiant and Frontier. We welcomed industry innovator OneJet. They are serving Indianapolis and Milwaukee. They just announced Hartford, and they have committed to a base in Pittsburgh and four new markets before the end of the year. Southwest, thank you very much, has added, uh, has added critical service to Los Angeles, a second daily flight to Los Angeles. They have picked up St. Louis and added Love Field. Air Canada has expanded its gauge into Toronto, upgraded its aircraft. Porter is now serving Billy Bishop in downtown Toronto. JetBlue added frequency and upgraded its aircraft to Boston. American added Cancun. Delta added Cancun and is now going to go daily to Paris for the entire six months that it will be served. Frontier and Allegiant. Frontier will be starting with five new markets in June, and Allegiant added eight new net, net last year. Sun Air Express, our small regional carrier, serves a number of key markets in Pennsylvania as well as Maryland and New York providing critical service for members of those communities to access Pittsburgh. Throughout all of this, we have maintained stable finances and we have lowered our costs. Thanks to creative partnerships like the one we have with Consol for gas development on airport property, our cost per plane passenger is the lowest it's been since 2008. We have an incredible team that makes this happen and I'm gonna ask them to stand up so if you are a member of the Airport County um, Authority, please stand up. And if any of the business agents are here, and I would just like to say. <laughs> these are the people who every single day, Jim Gill, the COO and CFO, and I are challenged by and inspired by in matters of operations, public safety, government affairs, human resources, finance, legal, marketing, customer service, air service development, planning, engineering, maintenance, facilities, environmental, IT, and business development. When I say it takes a team, it takes a team. And I am going to pick on Cleveland. <laughs> because let me tell you what happens when an airport team doesn't do a good job. Last year, Cleveland got fined $735,000 by, by the FAA for inadequate staffing of snow removal. I mean, really? So now you've got planes that can't land safely. Our snow team, they win awards. 
We have a maintenance staff that clears bags when our south baggage matrix jams up, which unfortunately happens because we've got so much capacity going through, especially during peak periods. And when the station managers get that call from corporate, like what the hell is going on down there, it helps that uh, the station managers in Pittsburgh can say, these guys are doing everything they can and we have a long-term strategy. An airport team can either make or break your ability to convince an airline to grow. And we are really lucky that we have one of the best. I am, I am honored to work with them. Along with them sharing in our success and helping us make the region a more, an easier sell are our partners and our strategic partners at Air Mall, at Grant Oliver, at Atlantic Aviation, at the TSA, Customs and Border Patrol, our de-icers, our wheelchair runners, our rental car partners, and our airlines who have invested in us and we hope each one will continue to grow. American, Southwest, Delta, United, Allegiant, Porter, Air Canada, JetBlue, Frontier, Sun Air, Vacation Express, and Apple Vacations. We thank them all for what they're doing. This group here, we have aligned ourselves aggressively with community partners to reach nationally and internationally more than we have done in the past, and I thank them sincerely. Our partnerships with Visit Pittsburgh, the Allegheny Conference, and the Pittsburgh Technology Council and others allow us to finally be singing from the same song sheet. We have the same playbook. So when we talk to any of us, business developers, travel writers, travel agents, conventioneers, or airline CEOs, they understand and they believe in the renaissance that is underway in Pittsburgh. We have been successful in taking a holistic approach in talking with our airlines. Our voices are being heard in airline planning rooms and in C-suites across the world because the airport is selling Pittsburgh. And because people like Cy Holzer from p and c People like Subra Suresh from Carnegie Mellon and Pat Gallagher from the University of Pittsburgh and Todd Underwood of Google or Don Hickton from RTI Alcoa and a lot of people in this room, many of whom are here, have given up their time to be available last minute for a meeting with an airline or to fly to Durban in order to pitch this community. PNC CEO Jim Rohr and Legendary Pictures CEO, I'm sorry, uh, Chairman Jim Rohr and Legendary Pictures CEO Thomas Tull went so far as to invest in an airline in one jet because of its commitment to Pittsburgh and because it was a good business decision. That kind of commitment does not happen in every city, trust me. I come from the consulting world and I worked with communities all over the world in helping to develop air service. This kind of partnership, highly unusual. In a lot of places, what you hear is, well, that's the airport's job. And it is, it is our job. Our job is to find the right opportunities and to get the airlines to show up and listen to us. But when we show up together with a we're all in this together approach, we get a lot more attention and we make a lot more noise. So going forward in 2016, I will tell you that we have work to do still and a lot of it. In the past year, we developed a strategic plan, we've built solid partnerships, and we realized how fast we have got to work on our innovation. We are going to continue to strengthen and broaden our community partnerships and ask for continued engagement. So if we haven't found you yet, <laughs> we will. We are going to continue to improve the facilities and we are going to continue to add more airline service. We know it's our top priority and everybody at the airport and on the staff understands their role in making that happen. We're also looking to nurture new ideas with new partnerships with CMU and the University of Pittsburgh by working on capstone projects with their students. If this is an area of innovation, we should be an airport of innovation. We're beginning the process of addressing our long-term facility needs. We have a 24-year-old terminal. It's no longer new. It was built for 35 million passengers. We have eight. Our aging equipment and infrastructure is costly to maintain and it was built for the connecting passenger model. That's why there are 1,200 covered spaces in a snow belt city. <laughs> uh, doing nothing is not an option. But we're gonna work together and we're gonna figure out what's best for the modern O&D airport that we've become. We're working on a master plan, which you're gonna hear more about, and we will be sure that that master plan 
includes a way to upgrade our facilities while materially lowering the costs to the airlines. We're going to continue to listen to our passengers through surveys, through social media, to find opportunities for new concessions, new services, new amenities. That data is critical in telling us how to create the most efficient and enjoyable travel experience and to raising revenue. We have an amazing culture in this city of foundation support around the arts and cultural activities. I've always said Pittsburgh punches way above its weight when it comes to this. And while we have some wonderful examples of that, including the Calder Mobile and the Terrazzo Floor and the new Toby Fraley robot repair shop, which is getting terrific attention, um, we need more. And we're going to be bringing that in. We're working with the foundations to see how we can leverage local resources and have them apparent at the airport. An example of this would be our new kids port. I don't know if you know this, but we had the first kids port in the country when it opened. The idea of a play area for parents and children was new. Every airport copied it, and ours is old, and it's tired. And we're hoping that community organizations and foundations and museums like the Children's Museum, the Carnegie Science Center, Tunseum, and Kidsburg <laughs> will be apparent in the, in the new renovated Kidsport area. We have a real interest in having people say at the airport when they arrive, wow, this is Pittsburgh, like I did, and when they leave to say, I can't wait to come back. We have a responsibility to reflect that right at the airport. We have a focus on making sure that we are doing everything we can to fill in the service gaps that we still have. From an air service perspective, we are still dramatically underserved. The LA flight, thank you Southwest, incredible. But as I said to them, now can we work on San Francisco? Um, we've got a lot of need to the Bay Area that our one daily flight does not fill. So whether it's San Jose, Oakland, or San Francisco, we are talking to airline partners about expansion. We are looking for San Diego and Seattle eventually. We are looking for our regional markets within that three to 700 mile drive time, or excuse me, uh, nautical mile range to be served. Cincinnati, Memphis, Albany, a lot of places that when you connect, it becomes a pain or you just don't go. So providing that kind of key business access is important. I don't want to forget the leisure destinations. US Airways did a great job of creating a path into the Caribbean to a whole lot of nonstop destinations. I get a lot of questions about Aruba. And we are working on improving the access into the Caribbean. Also into Montreal to expand our Canada service. But we know, I promise, eyes are on the prize. We want year-round, nonstop transatlantic service. And we know we can support it. For each and every one of these things that I've mentioned, we have the business case. This can get done. It's just a question of when. We also look forward in this, in this year, in 2016, to continuing our development. The airport corridor is hot. South Point is built out. And it turns out that one of the places that people want to be is in the airport corridor, as we heard earlier. So Charrington, the newly acquired operations control center that Americans sold us for a song, the World Trade Center, there are a number of development opportunities on our 8,800 acres of land that we look forward to partnering with the county, with the city, in order to improve the economic development opportunities for the, for the region. We also, finally, are going to be releasing soon a new brand, a new website, and a new ad campaign. It is time to move on. And we need something that reflects that. And a reason, again, to reach out to the airlines and say, we have moved onward, and there's so much more that you need to know about us. We remain committed to our military partners, and we were delighted to work with them as they sought to secure the C-17s. President Obama included in his budget the C-17s would be coming to Pittsburgh. We were able to extend the lease that we have for the military and extend the ramp space. An extra 25 acres were added into their lease. So we look forward to our continued partnership with the military at Pittsburgh International. County Airport is a fantastic facility. Executive travelers, anyone with a private plane, <laughs> and uh, student pilots know this. So do the people of West Mifflin. 
This airport was built in 1931. It has 60,000 operations every year. Voyager and Corporate Air are fantastic partners to us out there. They do a great business, as are some medical transport helicopters and other private companies. We look forward to completing the strategic plan we have for the county airport. We look forward to, to building on the public and community involvement that we started last year with the community days and our first ever runway 5K. That airport is going to play an incredibly important role during the U.S. Open. When all those golfers fly in, they fly into county. And that's where their drivers pick them up. And Knockwood, that airport will play a fantastic role when we get Super Bowl 57. <laughs> uh, so in close, let me just tell you that what lured me to Pittsburgh was, a, was two things. It's history and it's future. I love history and I love that this city built this country. I also love that I could see immediately that the business, civic, and government leaders and organizations of this area were focused on how to prepare for the future. I noticed how beautiful it is as a city, which I was not expecting, how much pride people have in their past and how much hope there is in the future, and immediately felt the welcoming spirit of this community. And I think that's what everybody feels when they come here for the first time. Like a lot of other cities in the Midwest and the Mid-Atlantic, Pittsburgh suffered during the recession, suffered disruption in industries, and lost a hub. But that sharpened our skills. It made us stronger, and it brought us together in new ways, in innovative ways, and it has us ready for tomorrow. Working together, we are competing, and the airport is finally contributing as a full partner in that competing, in that innovating, and in creating a region of resilience. So thank you for your attention, for your support, and for coming tonight.